My name is Jennifer Heathcote, and I am the Business Development Manager for GEW. GEW is a UK-based, UK family-owned and managed uh, UV curing system manufacturer. Our headquarters are based in the UK, um, where we do all of our manufacturing, engineering, and where all of our executive management offices are located. In the US, we have an office based in Ohio, where we have a warehouse, which um, also facilitate sales of both new systems as well as spare parts. Uh, we also have a service um, department in the U.S. that handles all installations in the Western Hemisphere, as well as troubleshooting over the phone. For those of you who may not be familiar with GEW, uh, we are a manufacturer of curing systems. This includes Mercury Arc, LED, and Excimer. We also manufacture and design all the ancillary and integration equipment components uh, that are required for the UV curing systems to run on various uh, manufacturing machines. All of our UV curing systems are used in combinations with application technology, including various printing methods, including Flexo, Offset, Digital Inkjet, Gravure, and Screen, um, as well as uh, coding applications and extruding applications. GEW is in various market segments. Um, for the last 20 years, we've been heavily uh, entrenched in the narrow web label market, uh, but we also sell into um, packaging, commercial printing, um, and especially um, mid and wide web uh, converting. If you want a better in-depth explanation as to the markets that we're in, how we see these markets, and how our technology solves the needs in these various markets, uh, you can find lots of more information on our website by following uh, this link and looking at our applications pages. So what am I going to talk about? Um, well, I'm going to talk about UV curing. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how it's used by converters, um, what it is, and how converters can transition to UV curing, whether that is mercury arc lamps, LED, or excimer. So UV curing is a process uh, that's used in roll-to-roll -roll converting uh, to rapidly cure inks, coatings, and adhesives. Um, this happens in line in an incredibly small footprint compared to other um, curing and drying technologies. And it also allows converters to process their um, applications at a very high speed. Uh, UV curing is not drying. It's actually a chemical reaction uh, that transforms liquid-like materials uh, that are wet to the touch into crossling polymers that are immediately dry to the touch. The reaction is driven by ultraviolet energy, and this UV energy can be generated in several ways, including mercury vapor lamps, light emitting diodes, and excimer lamps. So what is UV curing? UV curing, as I mentioned, is a chemical reaction, and it creates very strong bonds between the particles in the ink coating or adhesive. These, these bonds form long, continuous chains that dries, drive desirable uh, functional and aesthetic properties that you can't always achieve with other drying and curing mechanisms. Uh, UV materials are often 100% solids, which means there are zero liquid carriers, uh, which eliminates the need for all thermal drying. So how is UV curing used by converters? Well, it's used for printing applications, um, a range of, of adhesives, including PSAs, laminating. Um, it's also used for, for varnishes uh, and lacquers, as well as primers, top coats, and hard coats, which are a bit more functional uh, than a, st a standard varnish. Um, it's also used for silicone release when we need materials to separate easily. Um, it can be used to do both matting effects and high gloss effects. Um, special effects include tactile, haptic, and visual. And it can also provide functional characteristics that allow materials to slip, um, not slip, um, and, and not skid. This slide shows an image of, of two different uh, wide web applications. Uh, the image on the left is showing the uh, final product as it's coming off of the manufacturing line, uh, which would have either um, printed and UV cured um, decoration, in this case, a wood pattern, um, as well as either a, a high gloss or a matte um, finish. Uh, the image on the right shows the LED, actually, <laughs> mercury arc lamps separated from the web. You can see the chilled roller um, is on the left, and the lamps form a semicircle, which allows the web to pass along the chilled roller and be cured by any, anywhere from one to uh, seven mercury arc lamps. So there's three types of curing sources. Uh, we have 
standard Mercury Arc, uh, which has, uh, you know, the technology has been around um, really since, you know, the early 1900s, commercially since the 1950s and, and 1960s. A Mercury Arc lamp is, is similar to a conventional fluorescent lamp in the sense that you have a sealed quartz tube uh, with two electrodes. Uh, we generate a high voltage arc between those electrodes, which vaporizes the mercury uh, into a plasma gas. And that vaporized mercury emits a broadband spectral output. The image on the right is an excimer lamp. Uh, an excimer lamp pulses uh, electrical energy down the center coil. Um, and as the energy flows down the center coil, it actually tries to jump to the outside of the quartz tube. These yellow lines are actually ground electrodes. And as the electrical energy tries to go from that center positive electrode to the outer ground electrodes, it passes through um, a gas, an excimer gas, excimer molecules, and as those molecules become excited, they actually break down incredibly quickly. And as they drop to um, a lower energy state, they release uh, UV energy. The image on the bottom is a light emitting diode. These are semiconductors uh, that have each diode, and you can see there's a matrix of diodes in that image. Each diode has a positive and negative side. And as electrical current flows from the negative side to the positive side, it drops to a state of lower energy. And that differential in an energy drop is released as UV photons. If you would like more information on each of these technologies, please refer to our website um, under UV curing sources with a detailed explanation of, of these three technologies and the UV products that go along with them. Here are the, exa the examples of those uh, technologies in lamp form. Uh, the image on the left is a standard mercury arc lamp. Uh, they are cooled either with uh, air or with uh, liquid, most typically water, and are available in lengths up to two and a half meters. Uh, the center image shows a light emitting diode or LED lamp head. Uh, we're currently offering these in lengths up to 1.7 meters. And then the image on the right is the excimer lamp, uh, which is currently available in lengths up to 2.3 uh, meters. The excimer lamps cannot be overlapped uh, to form longer lengths. Uh, the mercury arc and the light emitting diode can in, in, in certain circumstances. Another type of a technology that kind of bridges um, the mercury arcs and the LEDs are what we call hybrid. Uh, this photo shows an example of lamp heads that are designed with an outer casing or housing uh, that allows a cassette that either includes a mercury lamp or a water cooled, um, an air cooled mercury lamp, a water cooled mercury lamp, or an LED lamp to slide in interchangeably as the application may require. So in terms of spectral output, how do these three lamp technologies differ? Well, this chart here shows uh, the comparison between a mercury vapor and an LED spectral output. Mercury vapor lamps are broadband. Uh, they emit everything between UVC on the left short end of the spectrum all the way up to infrared, which is actually off this chart on the far right of the spectrum. When you vaporize mercury, you just get a wide mix of spectral output that spans UV, visible, and infrared. Uh, they are rep the mercury lamp is represented by the gray uh, spectral distribution, whereas the purple and bluish bell curves that are much taller represent an LED system. Uh, LED systems are what we call quasi-monochromatic in that they um, only span a very narrow band of wavelengths and are able to emit a much higher peak irradiance. These systems are available centered at a given wavelength, which um, commercially is, is primarily 365, 385, 395, or 405. Um, by comparison, this slide uh, takes a look at both mercury vapor and excimer. Uh, the purple cur curve that spans the UVC um, all the way through the visible and the infrared is an example of a standard mercury arc lamp. The small peak that you see on the very left of the chart um, at around 172 nanometers, this is excimer. Um, excimer has also a quasi-monochromatic output and that it, it, it's not broadband. It doesn't span all the different wavelengths and kind of zeroes on in a very specific spectral output, in this case, 172 nanometers. It doesn't emit as, as much intensity as either a mercury lamp or an LED system. Uh, however, it's in a very defined part of the spectrum that can give us some very unique properties, as I will mention uh, in a second. So why does wavelength matter and how does it affect the depth of cure? Well, you can see um, in that box on the bottom, um, I, I kind of highlight 
what the different ranges of a spectral output. And spectral output is measured in distance, in nanometers, which is a billionth of a meter. Um, vacuum UV is on the shortest end or far left of the spectrum. Uh, and then as we move to the right, we see UVC, UVB, UVA, UV visible, visible light, which is between 400 and 700 nanometers, followed by infrared, which is 700 nanometers uh, to a millimeter. As wavelengths move to the right, the wavelength becomes longer, the penetration becomes deeper, but we also have decreasing UV energy with each photon that we're delivering. As we move to the left on this chart, or this illustration, we have decreasing or shorter wavelengths. We also have decreasing penetration. Uh, but at the same time, each one of those UV photons is actually delivering a greater amount of UV energy. So when we have a vacuum UV output, which is the case of an excimer lamp, uh, vacuum UV wavelengths um, are absorbed by oxygen, so they do not travel through air very well. As a result, anything that occurs in the vacuum UV, which is 100 to 200 nanometers, requires that it be done in a nitrogen inert environment. Uh, these wavelengths, while they're powerful, they're very short. They don't penetrate very deeply and are absorbed at the very, very top surface. You know, we're talking 100 to 200 nanometers, whereas UVC um, penetrates a bit deeper, uh, but still primarily absorbed at the surface. UVB goes a little bit into the middle of a formulation, whereas UVA and UVV having those longer wavelengths um, penetrate much deeper. So this slide kind of gives us another perspective on that, on that depth of cure. Uh, the graphic on the far left just shows a, a lay down of an ink coating or an adhesive. Uh, when we expose that adhesive, that formulation, that ink, that coating to UV energy, depending on the lamp system that we choose is going to influence how that wavelength penetrates through the material. If we jump to the final, the far right where we see the final cure, that would be achieved by using either a mercury lamp or an LED system that's able to penetrate all the way through the, the formulation. And that dark purple uh, illustrates a uh, full cross-linking of that material. If we enter a, a middle step, which might be an excimer lamp for the case of matting or an LED lamp in the case of pinning or gelling, we can partially cure that formulation. Uh, with an excimer lamp, we're only curing uh, that very, very top, again, 100, 200 nanometers of the surface and leaving the bottom portion uncured, which we would then need to hit with a final cure mercury or LED system. So in terms of UV curing, we have several options. Um, we can do an optional pre-gel pre or a pre-cure or a pin with LED. We can do an optional mattification of the top surface using an excimer lamp in a nitrogen inert environment. And then finally, we can full cure uh, with LED or with mercury arc. Uh, and again, a full cure system does not always require one and two, um, but using those three options in combination can produce a wide variety of surface properties and, and visual effects. Here is a video that's showing a UV cured coating. And we start with a high gloss, strictly mercury cured formulation, which you can see is going on the screen right now. It's very high gloss. As soon as we switch the excimer lamp on in combination with the full cure mercury lamp, the coating switches to a complete matte surface. So again, right now what you're seeing is high gloss and then instantly switches to matte. Matte is on the screen right now back to high gloss with strictly mercury. And again, it happens quickly, switch the excimer lamp on in combination with the mercury and it immediately goes to a matte. As you can see with UV curing, um, cure occurs in line and it's incredibly instant. So what needs are solved uh, through UV curing? Well, all mercury lamps, excimer lamps and LED uh, cure instantly at very fast line speeds. So converters using roll-to-roll -roll processes, um, this can be very beneficial. It allows you to ramp up and ramp down your line speeds and, and be able to deliver the amount of energy that you require. Uh, it reduces and eliminates uh, the thermal dryer size, the energy consumption, and, and carbon, carbon footprint. Um, we also eliminate that solvent chemistry which means you don't need thermal ovens to flash off the, the solvent or in the case of water-based materials, uh, the water. Uh, eliminates the need for afterburners, which and also means no greenhouse gases because there's no solvents in these materials. UV curing, because it's a chemical reaction, allows the chemistry to adhere to a wide range of materials and substrates. And in terms of printing, it generates very bold and vibrant colors. 
It can also provide superior chemical, scratch, and mar resistance for applications that have more demanding end uses. And it can also provide superior functional and aesthetic properties. And most importantly, for converters that are trying to get product out the door, uh, UV curing, because it is an, an instant uh, reaction, it allows you to either move that converted product to other finishing stages, um, incorporate those finishing stages in line, and then immediately ship uh, to, uh, to your customers and final destination. So LED builds on all of those uh, challenges and needs that are solved with, with, with all the lamps and that it reduces thermal transfer of the substrate. Uh, because LED systems have no infrared output, they actually result in less energy built up in the substrate as well as the machine components. Uh, they consume less electrical energy and are more efficient at converting that electrical energy into UV output. As the previous slides de demonstrated, LED provides deep UV pres present, uh, penetration. Because it is primarily UVA, long wavelength UVA and UVV, uh, the wavelengths penetrate all the way through um, inks, coatings, and adhesives, which can be beneficial if you have um, highly pigmented materials. LED lamps are instant on and off. Um, mercury lamps are not. Mercury lamps typically drop into a low-powered standby state and remain on um, until they're either powered off because of a shutdown or the end of a shift, whereas LEDs are, are instant on, instant off. Um, LED systems also increase lamp life. Uh, mercury lamps, it varies on the type of system. You know, some, some lamps um, for certain models um, at GEW and elsewhere may have, you know, 500 hours and some may, may go as high as 1,000 or, or 15 hours, whereas LEDs, um, if integrated correctly and used correctly, will last uh, in excess of 20,000 hours. LEDs also, um, because they don't degrade very quickly, but they give us improved process control. We always know what that lamp is doing in comparison to mercury lamps, which from the moment you turn it on are slowly diminishing in UV output. And another key aspect of LED technology is that it eliminates ozone generation um, as well as exhaust. And finally, Excimer solves the need to provide low gloss and or improved stain resistance and re reduce glare and or fingerprints. And this is because it is, it is truly a, a surface cure um, and it allows us to achieve a much higher level of matting or low gloss in comparison to both mercury lamps and, and LED lamps. So as you can see, we have three different technologies that can be used in, in, in a wide variety of ways to solve the various challenges, needs, and, and problems that roll-to-roll -roll web, com web converters uh, confront in, in their daily, um, daily operations. So who leads the LED curing system evolution? Well, if we kind of put a timeline here as, as LED kind of hitting the market back in 2005 and kind of progressing for a good 10 years through, through 2015. Um, the early movers in LED technology were the companies that were either A, already in UV curing and in targeting markets like spot cure adhesives um, and, and, and inkjet, digital inkjet technologies, as well as semiconductor technology companies who were already developing LEDs and packaging them for general lighting and other industrial applications kind of moved into this space. They were the ones that um, helped develop the early markets, um, brought the first products to the industry, and kind of overcame a lot of those initial challenges where the lamps really weren't that powerful, didn't last very long, were incredibly, um, were more expensive than conventional technology, and um, just it didn't last as long as, as, they, as they do today. Starting around 2015 and, and continuing to the present day and, and on to the end of the future, the, the leaders in LED um, equipment development kind of transitioned to, to those companies who were really competent at providing an entire system. You know, an LED or an excimer or a mercury lamp um, it is, is part of an, a much larger system. It includes not only the lamp head, but the power, the controls, uh, the ancillary equipment, uh, which is mounting brackets, chilled rollers, chilled plates, nitrogen inertion. So the companies that, that then kind of took the next step were the ones that could, could supply that entire system and provide all the components that would operate seamlessly with the manufacturing environment in which it was installed. And finally, what we're seeing today and what we will continue to see in the future is the companies who supply LED systems that are going to be the most successful and the ones that companies should be partnering with are the ones that understand how to take a look at the entire process. You know, it's not a matter of just um, purchasing a, an LED lamp out of a catalog, mounting on your press, 
switching it on and go. <laughs> it's it's much more much more involved. I wouldn't say that it's complicated, but there's a lot of nuances that must be factored into the process to make sure that you're getting the the right integration um, that enables you to achieve the desired uh, cure that will deliver the um, optimal process, aesthetic, and, and functional characteristics uh, that a roll-to-roll -roll, uh, converter would be looking for. So where is LED UV curing possible today? Well, it, it's, it's quite widely used in, in printing inks and, and across all the digital and anal analog options. Um, LED technology works great with inks, um, high-density inks, opaque inks. It also works well with pressure-sensitive adhesives, laminated adhesives, those longer wavelengths allow it to penetrate through the films um, much more easily than a mercury lamp. Uh, it works great for overprint varnishes, primers, and special effects coatings. Um, it can be used in combination uh, with mattification uh, using excimer lamps. Um, it can also be used in combination with LED pinning when the digital inkjet inks are still formulated for a standard mercury lamp. Uh, some inks have been formulated for LED, but there are still offerings out there that are strictly with mercury. In that case, you could pin with LED and then full cure with mercury. And finally, the areas that are still in development are primarily the functional coatings, tap coats, hard coats, silicone release, coefficient of friction, and all sorts of other functional coatings. Uh, there's lots of activity in the space. There's lots of a development. It is ongoing and, and will probably span in, in various um, aspects for the next, you know, three, five, ten years. So how do converters transition to LED? Well, the first point is that you need to, to educate and, and attending uh, conferences like AIMCAL, listening to webinars such as the one that I'm giving or presentations such as the one I'm giving allows you to understand um, what, what's involved, what are the options, and, and, and how best to proceed. Um, I would visit the GEW website, as I mentioned, under the Knowledge Hub and on the different um, pages of our website, there is lots of material that will allow you to have a better understanding of all three of these technologies and how it's used in manufacturing environments. You have to collaborate um, not only with the machine builders, but also the UV system suppliers, such as GEW, as well as the formulator, whether using an ink and a coating, an adhesive or an extrusion, the press, the UV curing system, the formulation, the application equipment all have to work together so that you can have a successful um, installation onto your uh, manufacturing line. Finally, we do um, pilot line and, and press trials where we test. Uh, this line shows the combination of the excimer lamp, the LED lamp, and the mercury lamp. They can be moved around in various combinations to test uh, the, the various features and parameters and UV curing that you might need for your application at various line speeds. And once we have a suitable result on a pilot line, then what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna kind of utilize that feedback loop. We're going to work with the formulator. We're going to work with the UV curing system suppliers, such as GAW. We're going to work with our press manufacturer, our, our OEM, our, our integrator, to understand how we can scale this up to a proper manufacturing line. At which point we move forward to integration. Uh, it could be a one lamp system. It could be a multiple lamp installation. Uh, it could be a combination system, which includes LED, mercury, and excimer, or one or two uh, of, of the three. And then finally, once we have everything integrated, we've developed our operating window and we have our process control established. Then we move into production where we can make a, a wide variety of, of products um, based on the manufacturing line and the curing equipment that is installed. So I encourage you uh, to visit our website. I encourage you to have another look at my presentation. Familiarize yourself with the various products that, that UV curing offers and how it can help transition you either from a, a water-based process or a solvent-based process into a UV curing, pro curing process that may include any combination of LED, mercury, and excimer. With that, I have reached the end of my presentation. I appreciate your time and attention, and I will be available uh, following the session for, for live Q&A if, if anybody needs to reach me and would like to ask me a question. My contact details are on the first page as well as in the IMCAL um, profile section. And if um, you still can't find me, <laughs> by all means, reach out to me on LinkedIn, and you can also call the GEW uh, main office, which is in Ohio. So I thank you and I hope that you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.